Ladies and gentlemen, good evening and good morning, and thank you for standing by. Welcome to the Tencent Music Entertainment Group Second Quarter 2022 Earnings Conference Call. Today, you will hear discussions from the management team of Tencent Music Entertainment Group, followed by a question and answer session. Please be advised that this conference is being recorded today. Now I will turn the conference over to your speaker host today, Mr. Tony Yip. Please go ahead, sir. Thank you, Operator. Hello, everyone, and thank you all for joining us on today's call. TME announced its quarterly financial results today after the market closed. An earnings release is now available on our IR website at ir.pensummusic.com, as well as via Newswire services. Today, you'll hear from Mr. Kashan Pang, our executive chairman, who will start the call with an overview of our recent updates. Next. Mr. Ross Liang, our CEO, and I, Tony Yip, as CSO, will offer additional thoughts on our product strategies, operations, and business developments. Finally, Ms. Shirley Hu, our CFO, will address our financial results before we open the call for questions. Before we continue, I refer you to our safe harbor statement in our earnings press release, which applies to this call as we will make forward-looking statements. The company will discuss non-IFRS measures today, which we believe are meaningful metrics for evaluating our performance. Please refer to our earnings release and SEC filings for reconciliation of these measures to the most comparable IFRS measures. With that, I'm pleased to turn over the call to Kushan, Executive Chairman of TME. Kushan. Thank you, Tony. Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining our call today. In June 2020, in June 2022, we celebrated the first anniversary of launching our dual engine content and platform strategy. Over the past year, TME has continuously innovated business models and improved our all-in-one music entertainment content and product capabilities to better serve our users and partners. Meanwhile, facing the complex and evolving industry landscape, we continue to explore music's intrinsic commercial and cultural value. As always, we strive to nurture our music ecosystem and foster the sustained, healthy development of China's music industry. On the content side, we steadily enriched our original content production capabilities. To that end, we launched a new smart music assistant functionality in May, enabling creators to quickly make decisions through our proprietary PDM, predictive model at key stages of the music production process, such as demo screening and market appeal potential evaluation. Each of our tools facilitates more efficient production of high quality work, evidenced by dozens of original songs produced and streamed more than 100 million times in the second quarter. Notably, Blessing of the Three Lifetimes, San Sheng San Xing, a song by Hai Lai Amu, dedicated to his beloved partner, was a blockbuster that we produced, promote, and helped to enlist it on the variety show The Treasure the Voice, Tian Shi the Sheng Ying. It dominated major music charts and generated huge social media buzz, comprising over 2.5 billion views and 350 million streams in the second quarter. Meanwhile, we continue to refine our original content catalog, focusing on key verticals such as gaming and hip-hop music. In the second quarter, we collaborated with popular game titles, including Honor of Kings, Wang Zhe Rong Yao, League of Legends Pro League, Ying Xiong Lian Meng, Jie Lian Sai, and Peacekeeper, Elite, He Ping Jing Ying, among others, and worked with well known artists including Angela Zhang, Zhang Xiao Han, Jim Shao, Xiao Jing Tang, and Xing to produce 15 chart topping game songs. Notably, the theme song of the Honor of Kings game character, Sang Guan Er, sung by Yi Se Yu, Yu Ke Wei has achieved the highest number of first week streams among all QQ Music game songs released in the first half of 2022. What's more, in the trendy hip-hop genre, 
It cooperated with the NBA on its 75th anniversary album. The title single, Time to Shine, 热爱 performed by Chinese artist Lei Zhang, Zhang Yixing, and American pro basketball star Nick Young, became the first Chinese theme song to appear in the NBA Finals. Next, through Tencent Musician Platform, we spared no efforts to cultivate a ripened community of indie musicians while creating a positive social impact. Tencent Musician Platforms continues to empower musicians with a wealth of online and offline promotion capabilities and monetization avenues. In the second quarter, we introduced a new service for our musicians to easily mass distribute musical works globally to over 150 popular platforms such as Spotify and YouTube with a single click, which has already brought 190,000 songs by over 10,000 musicians to overseas audience as of the end of the second quarter. Google also now allows musicians to publish their songs easily on mobile phones and to self-host pay-per-view live events with merchandise sales and baggage. For instance, we recently hosted a pay online birthday party for musician Yu Yan with a rich pipeline of additional parties yet to be unveiled. What's more, as a long-term support program for musicians, our four-stage 2022 program launched with the Open Mic series in April, which has already produced offline performances by over 70 groups of musicians across seven cities. Tencent Musician Platform also plays a pivotal role in exploring China's rich, deeply embedded social and cultural values through music works. Notable examples in the second quarter include, first, new trend in Chinese ancient style, Wo Feng Xin Chao, an album birthed by up-and-coming and top musicians who gathered to promote Chinese culture through music. Second, My Girls, our music creation plan for female musicians designed it to promote female independencies and self-awareness. Third, a Sino-French album, Music, Yue Se Ban Nan, a joint effort between our musicians, French musicians, and the French Embassy, which was showcased on the front page of Apple Music's recommendation list, further enhancing our musicians' international appeal. With our finger on the pulse of our users' preferences, we continue to zoom in on both trendy and time-honored music experiences. To further enhance the quality and variety of music on our platform as well as our reputation as the go-to destination for Q music verticals such as classical, DJ, and hip-hop, we established strategic cooperative relationships with professional classical arts institutions, launched the Cool Wars DJ for Everything plan, one Wu DJ Zihua, and build up Google's new rap brand, Rap Trailblazers, Suo Chang Xianfeng, among other initiatives in the second quarter. One remarkable success was the 2022 hit single, She Can Do Magic, Ta Hui Mo Fa Ba, by DJ Little Fish, Xiao Yue, which dominated charts on many music platforms after its creator joined the DJ for Everything plan achieving nearly 700 million streams by the end of the second quarter on TME's platform. Moving on to TME Live, our comprehensive online merch offline performances brand was presented 132 high-quality live music performances since its debut two years ago. In the second quarter, in addition to online live concerts for Royal Rank, Wang Yuan, among others. TME Live was also proud to breathe new life into two legendary series of recorded concerts by household name artists Leslie Zhang, Zhang Guolong, and Jay Chao, Zhou Jielun, supporting the ultra-high-definition visual and sound restorations enhanced by AI algorithms for selective events. These two huge hits 
went viral and dominated the top trending list, accumulating over 100 million unique viewers within the Tencent ecosystem and social media buzz of 6 billion views. J. Charles Concert also set a new record in viewership for online concerts in the industry and his artist merchandise, including two action figures sold through our Putao Mall and Tencent channels, achieved the close to 10 million RMB in GMV in the second quarter. GMV Live not only served as an online stage for artists and musicians, but also demonstrate our game-changing creativity offline. Through our TME Live in-house live house tour, we are providing participating artists and users with immersive, interactive experiences. Early starter artists, including Yang Jack, Man Su Ke, Red Paper, Bai Pi Su, and Cafe Hu, held live events in the second quarter and tickets for some events were sold out in just two hours. In summary, what matters most to music lovers, music creators, and the broader music industry are the primary areas where we will continue to invest and drive innovation, showcasing our ambition to support the sustained growth of the music ecosystem in China that concludes the process updates on our growing content capabilities. Now, I would like to turn the call over to Ross, who will share more about our platform strategies. Ross, please go ahead. Thank you, Carson. Hello, everyone. Moving on to our platform strategy. In the second quarter, we continued to innovate on our four pillars of entertainment, namely listen, watch, sing, and play to provide our users with a stage to express their musical taste and build their sense of identity on TME's platform, which in return deepens their recognition of and connection with our products. In terms of leasing, in the second quarter, we added a variety of refined product features to provide a more professional music streaming experience. For example, we pioneered homepage lyrics, which displays synchronous lyrics on the mobile home screen when streaming songs. We also rolled out a, a premium song feature, supporting real-time sound quality enhancement, which is now available via our Super VIP membership and has been activated by 85% of this Subscribes. What's more, to further improve users' music discovery efficiency, in the second quarter, QQ Music launched the Radar Mode Radar Mode on the homepage, which recommend, recommends songs to users based on their favorites with the help of personalized algorithm, contributing to new heights for QQ Music recommendation penetration. In addition, Google rolled out a new search feature allowing, allowing users to easily find the different version, remix, or styles, or styles of the same song. We also added features such as loop playback of a selected song section, and self-defined music chart preferences to create a more personalized music streaming experience. As for watch, we shall add another dimension to users' immersive music entertainment experience. Based on our understanding of users' preferences, the music-related video content we provide to Weixin video accounts is very popular among users on Weixin, ranking among the best in the music category of Weixin video accounts. We also continued to work with Weixin video accounts during the second quarter to boost our promotion capabilities, especially for Indian musicians. The number of our musicians with a connected Weixin video accounts continued to grow by double digits, quarter over quarter. Meanwhile, our products also released new updates 
to strengthen visual experience, include, including one, customized dynamic images on personal play, playlists, and two, focus station, Zhuangzhou Dianhai, which provides a video enhanced listening experience across three scenarios, studying, sleeping eye, and meditation. The third pillar of the unique music entertainment experience we provide is Sing. Sing launched a major version upgrade in July to expand the experience of Sing from a mirror production of audio work into multi-dimensional performance experience. In the second quarter, we rolled out a 3D avatar function, functionality KK Show to serve as users' identity card in the visual world and allow them to generate dance moves when recording and singing in their dressed-up avatar on stage. Additionally, in the second quarter, we provided innovative, innovative singing tools to stimulate users' interest in music creation as participation for mass involved. We think pioneer the industry's AI-based voice synthesis technology, allowing users locates to create a virtual thing based on their own voice, which improved upon, upon its likeness to its owner as, as it received additional input. Google also, uh, also unveiled its first singer in the voice of Gen, Gen Z celebrity Yang Chaoyue, enabling users to customize and uh, synthesize songs with just one click. Riding on the trend of visualization, we also enhance our play element by extending our use cases and the monetization opportunities across music-based virtual interactions. In the second quarter, TME Land, our immersive virtual theme park, teamed up with Adidas Originals and hosted China, China's first virtual rap concert, landing on the OZ feature. OZ Weilai Yin Hui, including sensational avatar performance by popular rappers J Park, Kiao Zai Fan, and MC Jin, Ouyang Jing, as well as virtual shoppable fashion, fashion show. The sponsor even rejected over 7 million views, setting a re new recorder in wheel shape for TME Land. We also continued to upgrade our we are album rooms, which combine listening to songs which are virtual exhibition hall for artists. A total of 13 stars have settled in our We are album rooms since lunch, including singer and actress Cindy Wang, Wang Xinling, and musician Liu Shuang, who joined in the second quarter. As a pioneer in the application of you know, innovative listening watch, Sing and play functions. QQ Music has continued to improve its MAUs year over year, a testament to our young content operations and advanced future interactions. Our long form audio serves to round out of our music portfolio while simultaneously differentiating our content. Notably, we have been strengthening our brand appear in Sleeping Eyed content, one of the fastest growing categories on QQ Music. We have teamed up with professional organizations, music labels, musicians, hotels, and other ecosystem partners to provide diverse professional Sleeping Eyed content, read by AI or real world celebrities, and delivered sequential growth in users' scale, streaming uh, volume, and the time spent in, the, in this vertical. In addition, in the second quarter, we continued to enhance our collaborations with Tencent Video to successfully promote, promote popular audiobooks and associate IPs, such as the third season of Wu Dong Xian Kun and Qie Shi Tian Xia. As its beloved uh, dramas hit the airwaves, TM's long-form audio offers of the same title enjoyed a mass 
upswing in their streaming volumes. With that, I'd like to give the floor to Tony to re review our business op operations. Tony, please go ahead. Thank you, Ross. Hello, everyone. In the second quarter, our online music MAU was $593 million, down year over year, primarily due to reduced marketing spend. However, subscription revenue continued to deliver robust year over year and quarter over growth, quarter over quarter growth along with paying user growth and a sequential rebound of ARPPU. Meanwhile, we continue to strengthen engagement among our core user cohorts by deploying richer content, innovative product features, and continual new iterations. Our IoT service MAUs continue to achieve double-digit growth year over year as we enrich the use cases of our products and established collaboration with a broader group of partners. For example, we now partner with the top 50 passenger vehicle and top 15 electric vehicle manufacturers by sales, bringing car owners the ultimate in-vehicle music enjoyment through new features such as Dolby surround sound and thousands of customized sound effects. In addition, through our partnership with Little Genius Smartwatch, which is mostly used by students, we things MAU in the smartwatch segment grew triple digits year over year. Despite the macro headwinds that weighted on our online music services revenue in the second quarter, subscriptions maintained its growth trajectory with 18% subscription revenue growth year over year. We are also confident we can sustain the ongoing rebound of our ARPPU while continuing to boost paying user growth during the remainder of this year. As a result of macro changes and the resurging COVID-19 outbreak in the second quarter, our advertising revenue softened year over year. However, it rebounded quarter over quarter. Driven by the June 18th e-commerce sales promotions, as well as ad sponsorship opportunities arising from TME Live and TME Land. In addition, we consistently innovated to build a diversified advertising portfolio. Our incentive ad-based free listening mode is making good progress, and during the second quarter, we launched a host of new advertising formats and infantries on music charts, search pages, banners, and playlists, among others, as we have strengthened our advertising monetization with additional avenues, we also successfully attracted well-known brands such as Sprite, Beijing Hyundai, and Pepsi to sponsor a variety of customized online and offline live events recently, attracting participation by dozens of popular artists and aspiring musicians in these highly engaging events. We continue to deepen our content partnership to enrich the user experience and explore additional monetization avenues in digital music. First, accompanying the launch of Jay Chow's So Jelen's latest digital album, Greatest Works of Art, Sui Wei Da the we tailored diverse activities for his fans such as a customized vinyl record player interface and sound effects, artist merchandise, and interactions in Jay Chow's virtual room. Copies sold exceeded 6 million by the end of July, marking another digital album blockbuster on our platform. Next, in the second quarter, we entered into strategic partnerships with Time Fungjin Entertainment, the music label of TF Boys and Teens in Times, Shidai Shaonian Tuan, Avex China, and the talented female artist Xin Liu, Liu Yuxin, among others, where our platform has a head start period on their latest music, customized artist merchandise, or unique artist fan interaction events. Third, we join hands with YH Entertainment Group, Yue Hua Yule, a well-known artist management company 
to launch artist subscription, Taoji Dingyue, packages for its 13 well-known artists such as Meng Meiqi and Justin Huang, Huang Minghao, providing customized audio and video content for the subscribing fans. We also doubled down on our efforts to build a young and trendy cultural community to expand our Gen Z user base. In the second quarter, our campus musician cultivation plan, Vol Our Campus, Ni Hao Da Xue Sang, organized the Wish for a Happy Graduation, Zhu Ta Bi Ye Kuai Le, event, and teamed up with artist Mao Bu Yi and campus musician Yang Ge to release the song Small World, Xiang Su Jie. These initiatives brought inspiring messages to the first group of graduates born in the 2000s, resonating strongly with the new graduates' demographic. What's more, we began to bring offline music festivals back to our audience in the second quarter, such as Kugo's Ku Fun, Ku Fun Xian Tang, live performance parade, which debuted in Hangzhou in May, and the first wave music festival partnered with SAIC Audi, Sanqi Audi in June encouraging online live streaming and offline interactions between fans and musicians. These events are just the beginning of our return to live performances. We have an exciting lineup of offline experiences planned for the coming quarters. Now, let's turn to our social entertainment services. It's MAU sequentially improved while paying users decline year over year due to competition and industry adjustments. We will continue to improve our competitiveness through ongoing product innovations and new initiatives, such as audio live streaming and virtual interactive product offerings. For WeSing, we launched its latest version with tools to energize the singing experience while lowering the barrier to participate. For instance, the upgraded one-click voice enhancement feature, Yijian Meiying, customizes voice improvement based on the song's rhythm, as well as user's voice volume and timbre, producing a more natural effect. Along with other upgrades mentioned earlier, these efforts paid off, as evidenced by the strong double-digit year-over-year expansion in karaoke room penetration and user time spent in the second quarter, in addition to the year-over-year -year growth in recordings, penetration, and user time spent. In the second quarter, we sing also capitalized on the success of the hit song Lonely Warrior, Gu Yongze, which debuted on TME and achieved 4 billion streams across our platform since its launch, with a nationwide cover contest to convey positive cultural power to school students attracting a broad group of participants online. In response to the competition faced by traditional live streaming services, we continue to expand our content verticals and bring more differentiated content to improve user experience. QQ Music Live Streaming continues to expand the scale of its audio live streaming content offerings, where it expanded content across sleeping aid, studying, and commuting use cases received wide user acclaim. In the second quarter, it also collaborated with Tencent Musician Platform to organize 39 sessions of the real-time live singing event, Meet, Let's Sing, connecting musicians and their fans and gaining over 10 million viewers. These efforts contributed to double-digit growth in the average daily number of hosts and viewers as well as a year-over-year -year increase in QQ Music live streaming's revenue in the second quarter. We were also successful in exploring overseas markets with audio live streaming activities such as chat rooms, leading to strong revenue growth in overseas markets in the second quarter. We also delved into the virtual idol and animation live streaming verticals favored by the young generation. We think added a new live 2D function, which captures hosts' expressions and movements in real time, and allow the hosts to use an avatar 
for live streaming and multi-person interactions. Additionally, Google's live streaming host, together with his self-owned virtual idol, Shanbao, and Tencent Animation and Comics, Peng Xun Dongman, jointly organized a number of events to recommend popular comic IPs to ACG fans through live streaming, during which the event's participating hosts recorded triple-digit growth in user time spent and the number of viewers of their live streaming rooms. Last but not least, I'd like to close with a word about our social responsibility initiatives. On Children's Day, we worked with Tencent to launch the Little Red Flower Charity Concert, uniting over 30 groups of artists and musicians in a heartwarming live concert for children with special needs. We also partnered with Lamar to host a special public welfare concert for World Oceans Day, launching a welfare song, Blue New Life, Wei Nan Xing Sheng by Mao Buyi, to create environmental awareness around the marine ecosystem. We're proud of these efforts to leverage the emotional power of music to advance our social commitment. To conclude, as our dual engine content and platform strategy move forward, we will continue to use technology to elevate the role of music in people's lives and support the sustained development of the music industry with our strong and growing toolkit. With that, I would like to turn the call over to Shirley, our CFO, for a closer review of our financials. Thank you, Tony. Hello, everyone. Next, I'll discuss our results from a financial perspective. Our total revenues for Q2 2022 were MB 6.9 billion, down by 14% year over year, and up by 4% sequentially. In the second quarter of 2022, our IFS net profit was MB 892 million, and the non FIS net profit was MB 1.07 billion, which represented a sequential increase of 13% as a result of our effective cost control and improved operating efficiency. In Q2 2022, we are more focused on the return of the promotions for subscription web service and continued to strengthen content operations. We achieved costly growth in subscription service. Music subscription revenues grew to MB 2.11 billion, up by 18% year over year and by 6% sequentially. Online music paying users grew to 82.7 million, up by 25% year over year, representing a 2.5 million net ads sequentially as we benefit from expanded sales channels and paying users' loyalty resulted from the ongoing efforts we made to cultivate users' willingness to pay for music and high-quality content and the services we provide. Month up was an MB 8.5, representing a decrease from MB 9 in the same period last year, and an increase from MB 8.3 in the first quarter of this year. Our strategy to grow our music business in a healthy and a sustainable way has started to bear fruit and contributable to the continuous growth in musical subscriptions revenue. Revenues from advertising decreased year over year as advertising business continued to be negatively impacted by the industrial adjustment and the outbreak of COVID-19. However, advertising revenues grew sequentially as advertising business began to recover moderately from the outbreak of COVID-19 since June. The June 18th e-commerce sales promotions also contributed to the sequential increase in advertising revenues. We are proactively expanding ad inventories, optimizing ad display, and rolling out innovative advertising formats to manage these challenges. We remain confident about long-term growth potential and expect advertising revenues to continue to recover moderately in the second half of 2022. 
Social Entertainment Services and other revenues were empty 4 billion, <coughs> down by 20% year over year, as we faced an evolving micro environment and intense competition from other platforms to adapt to the changing environment and to stabilize revenue skills. We have differentiated our content offerings by enriching our visual interactive product offerings and enrich cross-platform collaboration. Meanwhile, we continued to invest in audio live streaming and extend our international business, resulting in growth in revenues from audio live streaming and overseas business year over year and sequentially. Growth margin in Q2 2022 was 29.9%, down by 0.5% year over year, because the decrease in our total revenues outpaced the decrease in our total cost of revenues, as some of them remained fixed in nature. Growth margin improved securely, resulted from our effective control on content costs, including revenue showing fees for live streaming business, and improved operational cost efficiency. We will continue to take measures to manage costs effectively and improve overall efficiency. Now, moving on to operating expenses. Total operating expenses for Q2 2022 were RMB 1.4 billion, or 20.5% as a percentage of total revenues, down by 0.4% from 20.9% as a percentage of total revenues in the same period last year. Excluding the impact from the expenses related to our application for secondary listing, operating expenses as a percentage of total revenues would have decreased by 1% year over year. Selling and marketing expenses were RMB 303 million, down by 55% year over year. During the quarter, we continued to take measures to improve efficiency, closely monitor the ROI of each promotion channel, try to utilize the external promotion channels, and leverage our internal traffic to attract users and promote our brands. The reduced marketing spend resulted in loss of some casual users and impact our music and use negatively. However, our music subscription service continued to grow rapidly with health growth in paying users and the level of user activities. General and administrative expenses were RMB 1.1 billion, up by 11% year over year, <coughs> excluding the impact of approximately RMB 44 million from the expense in Q2 related to our application for secondary listing, GNA would have increased by 6% year over year. We continue to, to invest in product enhancements, technology innovations, and more diversified product offerings, as well as closely manage employee related expenses by improving headcount efficiency. Our effective tax rate for Q2 2022 was 12.2%, compared to 11.5% in the same period of 2021. The increase in effective tax rate was mainly due to some of our entities are entitled to different tax benefits in 2021 and 2022. For Q2 2022, our net profit was RMB 89. Uh, RMB 892 million, and the net profit attributable to equity holders of the company was RMB 856 million. Non RFS net profit was RMB 1.07 billion, and the non RFS net profit attributable to equity holders of the company was RMB 1.03 billion. Non RFS net profit margin was 15.4%. As of June 30, 2022, our combined balances of cash, cash equivalents, term deposits, and short-term investments were RMB 25.8 billion, compared with RMB 24.9 billion as of March 1, 2022. During the three months ended June 30, 2022, 
net cash generated from operations was RMV 1.2 billion, and the cash used to ensure repurchases was RMV 669 million. We also incurred a net cash outflow of RMV 497 million for acquisition of shares in various subsidiaries and associates. Such combined balance was also affected by the change in the exchange rate of RMB to USD at a different balance sheet date. Looking forward, we will continue to focus on our core business and invest mindfully in new products and services, including long-form audio and international business, to maximize our investment returns and the future growth potential. Meanwhile, we will continue to implement cost controls in areas including revenue sharing fees for social entertainment business, content royalties, operating costs, high counter related costs, and selling and marketing expenses to improve our overall operational efficiency. This concludes our prepared remarks. Operator, we are ready to open the call for questions. Thank you. We will now begin the question and answer session. To ask a question, you may press star then one on your touchstone phone. If you are using a speakerphone, please pick up your handset before pressing the keys. If at any time your question has been addressed and you would like to withdraw your question, please press star then two. For the benefit of all participants on today's call, please limit yourself to one question. And if you have additional questions, you may re-enter the queue. At this time, we will pause momentarily to assemble our roster. Our first question will come from Alex Poon with Morgan Stanley. Please go ahead. Uh, good morning, management. Uh, congrats on a very strong uh, quarter uh, uh, on the profit side. Um, my question is related, related to gross margin. Um, the gross margin is up about two percentage points on a sequential basis in Q2, and uh, despite the social revenue was flat on a two on two basis. Um, can management explain on um, each of the segment gross margin trend uh, from Q1 to Q2 and how should we think about the second half? Thank you very much. Okay. <clears throat> uh, about the gross margin, uh, this quarter uh, we take more measures to control costs and improve operational efficiency. And we have started to uh, bear fruit. Gross margin in Q2 increased 2% sequentially. Uh, the following factors have positive impact on gross margin. First, revenue sharing ratio of live streaming have been controlled and continued to decrease sequentially. And second, we increased the RC requirement of content cost. We restricted the agreement with some music labels and say the positive feedback that have positive impact on our gross margin. And the third, the optimized the, the technology and operation strategy related to bandwidth and the storage capability, and improved the utilization of our service and equipment. Our operational costs decreased sequentially. And the fourth, subscription revenue growth and the advertising revenue recovery also have positive impact on gross margin. And uh, we will continue to focus on increasing efficiency of all business units and the cost items. And uh, we expect our gross margin will be increased in the next quarter. Our next question will come from Lei Hang with Bank of America. Please go ahead. Uh, hi, uh, uh, thanks, management, and congrats on the solid results. Um, my question is mainly about uh, your music carpool. Notice the QMQ rebound of music carpool and any more color you can hear behind it, and how should we look at the RP trend going forward? And related to this, um, can you give us more color on the super VIP, like uh, uh, adoption rate, user feedback, and the contribution to the RP? Uh, thanks. Yeah, in terms of the ARPPU, um, you know, we saw a sequential improvement uh, from last quarter's uh, uh, $8.30 uh, RMB 
uh, to this quarter's uh, $8.50 RMB. Um, and that's a, a result from uh, uh, more effective promotions, um, you know, as well as more discipline uh, in the way that we manage the, uh, uh, the, the marketing spend. Um, our focus, as we mentioned last quarter, is on the quality of the subscription revenue growth as the overall target, in that we are aiming to both grow the paying user as well as the ARPPU uh, at a healthy pace. Um, and we've been able to achieve that uh, in the second quarter, and we expect uh, this uh, level of uh, a growth trend uh, for both our subscribers and ARPPU to continue into the rest of the year. Our next question will come from Alex Yeo with J.P. Morgan. Please go ahead. Hi, good morning, management. Thank you for taking the question. Uh, I have a couple of questions on um, uh, the music subscription side of the business. Um, can you guys share with us your progress uh, in terms of uh, pushing up the paywall? Um, what percentage of the content now is behind the paywall? And what target are you um, aiming to achieve by the end of the year? And also, uh, regarding the non-paying user, where is your experience is becoming um, inferior and inferior as they are able to listen to less and less of the content? Um, what are you trying to do with these guys? Are you going to let them go, or you, do you want to uh, engage them through other um, strategies and um, um, features? Thank you. Oh, sure. Well, first of all, in terms of our subscription uh, package, uh, obviously I think we continue to be on track. Um, you know, as we uh, uh, have more and more discussions with our label partners uh, to add more content uh, into the premium package, um, and that progress is, is going well, and, you know, we expect there to be more uh, content partners to be added to the paywall in the second half. Um, so I think we will uh, talk more about that as, as that uh, uh, bears fruit. And then in terms of the balance between free user experience and the paid user experience, um, we mentioned previously and we also touched upon it this time, it, it is the incentive ad-based uh, free listening mode. Um, you know, we're seeing very good progress uh, on that uh, type of free listening mode. Uh, we think that's a, a good way for us to strike the balance because they will, uh, you know, as with any uh, 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 entertainment platform online, you're bound to have a portion of users uh, with very low probability of conversion to become a subscriber. Uh, and yet, uh, you know, we need to find a way to be able to monetize. And so the incentive ad-based uh, free listening mode uh, is, is a good way for us to do so. Um, right now, within our advertising revenue, um, close to 10% uh, of that on a run rate basis is uh, generated by the uh, incentive ad-based free listening mode, uh, free through incentive ads, uh, more, more, more correctly speaking. So I think that's, uh, and that's growing quite uh, well. Um, so we continue to expect that to uh, uh, serve as the, uh, 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 serve as the balancing factor to provide a good free user experience. Our next question will come from Alicia Yap with Citi. Please go ahead. Um, hi. Um, good morning, management. Um, thanks for taking my question. Um, I have a question related to the advertising. Um, so can management share with us the latest uh, ad sentiments among the advertiser? Uh, which industry vertical actually has recovered uh, strongly and which industry verticals are still remaining quite weak? Um, and then uh, when can we expect um, the ad revenue to experience the reaccelerate uh, on the year over year basis, uh, reaccelerate the growth again? Um, and thank you. Yeah. Um, obviously, I think in the first half, um, you know, as a result of industry adjustments on the splash ads, um, as well as the pandemic measures, uh, advertising revenue uh, was quite weak in the first half. Um, however, 
you know, as we uh, as the pandemic uh, improves, as well as the opening, uh, as, well, as well as the macroeconomic situation improves, uh, we are starting to see moderate recovery of the advertisers' demand. Um, coupled with that with our ongoing effort uh, to expand our uh, advertising format as well as advertising infantries that we've mentioned, uh, we are see we are expecting to see a recovery of the advertising revenue in the second half. Um, in, in addition to kind of uh, the the uh, ad formats that we mentioned, uh, such as incentive ad or F, uh, infantry that we mentioned in the various uh, parts of the platform, we are seeing increasing amount of interest uh, by, uh, ad sp uh, by ad sponsors that are particularly interested in interactive events, uh, uh, events that we organize both offline and online, uh, such as ones that we do uh, on TMD land or through TMD live or other uh, uh, sponsored uh, events with uh, uh, Pepsi, uh, Sprite, and, and Beijing Honda, et cetera. Um, in terms of verticals in this quarter, uh, you know, we see uh, decent demand recovery, particularly uh, from e-commerce, uh, given the e-commerce uh, June season. Uh, the consumer stable uh, specifically categories such as food and beverages, uh, as well as the, uh, uh, the automobile industry. Our next question will come from Shea King Zhang with CICC. Please go ahead. Hey, thanks, management, for taking my question. And my question is related to TME Live. Uh, we saw some other short video platforms have launched online, uh, online live performance one after another during the summer. Uh, so uh, just wondering how do we position TME Live and uh, how do we think about the competition landscape? Uh, what's the strategy and monetization plan for this business? Thank you. Okay, um, for TME Live, I think we have a, a very good plan in uh, having arrangement on not just top for the top tier artists, but we are also growing the long tiers, um, the other different verticals as well. Um, we have a really good uh, cooperation with the racing uh, video accounts. So uh, we also strengthen our distribution capabilities for our live projects. Uh, as we mentioned during our call, we mentioned about some of the um, top tier artists like Jay Chow and also Leslie Zhang that we um, trying to do uh, a new release of their traditional, their very popular um, classical, um, uh, their classic uh, concerts, and it aroused a lot of interest from the users. And we also bring in our technology. Um, advice in that we help to uh, improve the quality of the overall video and also the um, audio qualities, so to ensure a better user experience for our users. Um, we have continued to uh, bring in some of the artists, uh, for example, interactive capabilities um, to demonstrate in our TMB Live um, um, program as well. So we have a very good confidence, um, especially uh, we are doing an online and offline um, collaborations for our concerts. So um, all of this will be continue to strengthen our TME's um, uh, uh, TME Live projects, and we definitely seeing that it's going to be um, some more great programs to come in the future. Our next question will come from Wei Zhang with UBS. Please go ahead. Um, good morning, management. Thank you for taking my question, and congrats on the earnings beat this quarter. Um, my question is around uh, the online music uh, subscription or paying user edition. Uh, we see that this quarter the, the net paying user edition was a little bit lower than the previous run rate, uh, given our uh, focus on the quality growth and also seek the balance between paying user and ARPU. So just want to check um, how should we think about the run rate of the paying user edition for the second half, also uh, next year, and uh, given our focus um, on the marketing spend uh, to, to strengthen our cost controls, uh, will that impact uh, the paying user retention? Thank you. Yeah, as we um, mentioned before, uh, our overall goal for the, um, the subscription revenue, uh, you know, for, for the online music is to see a healthy growth in overall subscription revenue and not be overly 
uh, you know, leaning on just, uh, you know, either the subscriber or the ARPPU. So we want uh, a healthy growth in both metrics um, because we think the whole industry will benefit uh, from focusing more on what's called the quality of service as opposed to, you know, just on price. Um, and we we do believe there's a lot of value in the music subscription service that we offer and that, you know, our, our continuous effort to cultivate the user's willingness to, to pay for the subscription service, that continues to see good results. Um, and so by you know, having more of a balanced approach, we lay a stronger foundation for the long-term growth, which we continue to see there to be a, a strong potential. Um, obviously, at, at the same time, uh, you know, we uh, are very focused on expanding on the uh, uh, privileges and the, the service that we offer within the subscription plan. So, uh, you know, in, we mentioned that we continue to add more and more privileges, such as, you know, this quarter we mentioned about the Super VIP, uh, you know, whereby, you know, for, for, for 30 RMB a month, uh, which is double the price of a, a normal premium uh, subscription, uh, you get a lot more, uh, you know, uh, you know, such as you get access to a, a large number of digital albums. You know, you get access to super high quality uh, 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 sort of music uh, effects, uh, ones that Ross mentioned. Um, you know, you get access to the WeSing uh, membership. You get access to the long audio membership, et cetera, et cetera. So we are seeing, we are seeing. Uh, it's early stage, but we are seeing good traction um, as we roll that out, um, and people are adopting and they are appreciating the, the privileges that we're putting in to those super VIP. So, for example, the, the premium sound quality uh, feature that's adopted by over 80% of people who have subscribed to the super VIP, um, and so that also help us uh, improve the. Uh, ARPPU, in addition to having, you know, more discipline in cost control as well as promotional spend. Our next question will come from Jen Howe with PH Capital. Please go ahead. Uh, yeah, morning management. Congratulations on the such a good quarter. Uh, the question is related to your much more uh, grant strategy with Tencent. And you guys have already started to do advertising member and content distribution. And uh, I wonder, you know, for our uh, newly added members, how many, well, what percentage of them come from Tencent channel? And uh, going forward, um, as Tencent continues to add it, the new functions like uh, Tencent shipping, et cetera, et cetera, you know, how are you guys going to uh, have a, uh, how to say long-term cooperation and so to enable you guys to have more sustainable users instead of uh, you know uh, uh, only instead of driven by this uh, hit uh, um, uh, albums or uh, artists. So thank you. That's my question. Yeah, um, we have very extensive collaboration with Tencent. I, I can start and uh, perhaps a uh, Ross can add uh, uh, additional colors as well. Um, we have extensive collaboration with Tencent, both on the uh, content production side as well as on the uh, music promotion side. You know, on the content production side, we mentioned that we, uh, almost every quarter, uh, you know, we showcase uh, original songs that are produced either for some of the uh, Tencent IPs uh, you know, such as uh, selected IPs in Tencent Games or some of the IPs from uh, Tencent Videos, for example. And many of these original content that are either produced by us or co-produced together, uh, you know, they, uh, uh, they, they see very good results in terms of popularity on the music charts. That's kind of one big bucket of areas. The second big bucket of areas are in the form of content promotion. Um, you know, a prime example of that is you know, our deepened collaboration through uh, the Weixing video accounts. Um, you know, the, it's, it's an important means for us to enrich the music video-based content. Uh, you know, uh, all of our platforms, you know, be it QQ Music or, or Kugo or Kuo, you know, we, provi we, we promote a lot of music-related video content through uh, Weixing video accounts. 
Um, in fact, you know, the content that we provide is uh, ranking amongst the best in the music category within the, the waiting video account uh, um, uh, sort of music vertical. Uh, and so that uh, serves as a, uh, a way for the music lovers to discover music, and they, after which the users come back to TME platform uh, to continue to explore and enjoy uh, music in a, in a more uh, deepened way. Uh, and then finally, while we don't rely on Tencent channels at all from a user perspective, given you know our music platform is already very established and we've been uh, uh, in operation for many years, have very established brands, so most of our, uh, uh, our traffic is organic. Um, we, we do have more and more collaboration, for example, through our uh, uh, a partnership between QQ Music and uh, WeChat, uh, WeSing. Um, there are more product features collaboration, such as you can now set uh, ringtones uh, on WeSing using music provided by QQ Music. Uh, obviously, you can go back to QQ Music to listen to the songs. Uh, you know, you can update your personal profiles uh, using songs provided uh, uh, and listed, being listened to by on QQ Music, etc. So we, we are seeing more and more collaboration, and, and we expect that to continue. Uh, we are uh, now approaching the end of the question. Okay. We are now approaching the end of the conference call. I will now turn the call over to your speaker host today, Mr. Tony Yip, for closing remarks. Okay. Well, um, thank you very much for joining our second quarter uh, earnings call. If you have further questions, please feel free to contact the investor relations team. Uh, and this concludes the, today's call. We look forward to speaking with you all again next quarter. Thank you and goodbye. Thank you so much. Goodbye. The conference is now concluded. Thank you for attending today's presentation. You may now disconnect.